Corneal crosslinking is a minimally invasive in-office procedure that is done with the goal of strengthening the bonds between the collagen fibers in the cornea, which is the clear structure at the very front of the eye. Um, it takes about an hour and a half to two hours, and the eye is anesthetized before we even start, so there's very minimal, if any, discomfort throughout the procedure. The first step is to um, get rid of the most superficial layer of the cornea, the epithelium, in order to maximize the exposure uh, to the medication. Over the next 30 minutes, an eye drop called riboflavin is uh, applied to the corneal surface. And then after that, uh, UV light is brought in and the cornea is exposed to the UV light for another half an hour. Um, during this exposure, the UV light helps activate that medication that was put into the eye and helps strengthen those bonds. Once the procedure is over, a bandage contact lens is applied to the surface of the eye, where it will stay for about a week to promote healing and to prevent discomfort. The patient is sent home with an eye drop to use just a couple times a day throughout the healing process. Most patients can return to their normally scheduled activities about a week later, sometimes earlier, uh, and they can expect to update their glasses or contact lens prescription anywhere between six to eight weeks after the procedure, give or take. This device is FDA approved with the model that we have here at Eye Surgeons of Indiana. Uh, there is also a degree of coverage by insurances, uh, depending on what your plan is. We perform corneal cross-linking um, for many reasons, um, but not to correct somebody's vision. So when you have this procedure done, it is not supposed to reduce your dependence on glasses or contacts. Um, on the contrary, most patients require glasses or specialty contact lenses to achieve their best vision after surgery. We perform corneal cross-linking in order to prevent progression of conditions that cause thinning to the cornea. If these conditions are left untreated, they can lead to painful, potentially blinding conditions that require corneal transplants to fix. Uh, we see this type of thinning in patients sometimes who have had previous corneal surgeries, such as LASIK, but more often than not, they are seen in patients that have a condition called keratoconus. Keratoconus is just the shape of the front of the eye being shaped more like a cone rather than a sphere or basketball, like a quote unquote average cornea. Patients with keratoconus can experience fluctuating vision, changes to prescription multiple times a year, and vision that just never seems right with glasses. In performing keratoconus, we can put a stop to this fluctuation so that people can have stable vision, stable prescriptions, and peace of mind that they will be protected from these more serious conditions in the future. So corneal cross-linking candidates are really anybody that has keratoconus or some other flavor of progressive corneal thinning disorder. Um, especially if it's progressive. You can tell if it's progressive, if the vision is reducing over time, if the prescription is rapidly changing, um, or if you show changes to your corneal curvature map that can be taken every year by your eye care provider. Corneal cross-linking can be performed in teenagers as young as 13. Uh, and the earlier that we're able to intervene, the better the outcome for the patient uh, although we still perform this on adults at a regular interval. Uh, other than that, um, people who are at risk for keratoconus are um, people who do have a genetic component, um, but also those that have atopic conditions such as allergies um, or people who are chronic eye rubbers. The other two requirements for corneal cross-linking is to have a nice clear cornea with very minimal scarring and that cornea has to be of appropriate thickness. Those are two requirements that can easily be obtained by a visit to your eye care provider. And so corneal cross-linking helps patients in that it mostly provides stability to that prescription um, and peace of mind that it's not going to progress over time. Um, when I was in residency, brand new in residency, um, we had a young patient who came in just at wit's end with her vision she had bought three new pairs of glasses over the span of six months. She had tried pretty much every soft contact lens on the market and nothing ever fit her right. Um, and it was causing her a lot of uh, problems in her daily life. She wasn't able to function at work, you name it. Um, so we performed corneal cross-linking on her, uh, let her heal and then fit her with some specialty contact lenses 
Um, and I will never forget the look on her face when she read the 2020 line for probably the first time and was just in complete utter shock. Um, I keep in touch with my director pretty regularly and almost four years later, she hasn't changed one bit. Her prescription is exactly the same. Um, so she has really been able to turn a corner and it's been a whole new world for her.